we're going to have a look at doing dodging and burning right now. We're going to look at two different methods. One of them is going to be right here in Photoshop, and the other one's going to be in Camera Raw. So if you actually open up dodge slash burn.psd, you'll see that you have a document here with an image. This image is a smart object, which is a raw file that's embedded in here. Now, if you don't want to open it in Camera Raw, just right click and then just choose Rasterize Layer, and you can get to work right away inside Photoshop. But what we're going to do is we're going to jump into Camera Raw. So I'm going to double tap it, and it's going to open inside Camera Raw, which comes with Photoshop. Now, if you want to open a JPEG or a TIFF in Camera Raw, just go to Bridge, right click, or right tap actually, and then just choose Open in Camera Raw, and it will open it inside this window. If you have a RAW file, it's automatically going to open in here. So here we are, we've opened it up, and the reason I've got us in here is, you know, we've got a bunch of adjustments here that we can use. You know, we can set our exposure if we want, which is our overall brightness. Contrast is whites to black, so we can have a very low or a very high contrast. Uh, we can play for highlights and shadows. This will recover detail and highlights. Be careful, though, it gets a little noisy when we start to get too far. When we push these, I'll go to 100%, and you'll see what I mean. And we'll just um, drag this down. I'm just using the spacebar tool. And just be a little careful. See, sometimes when we push these settings too far, we can really introduce a little noise. It's not looking too bad there at this point, though. So we're, we're good. Let's go back to our fit and view. And then the other one is the shadows. If we go here, we can open up some of the details in the shadows. Or if we pull it down, we close those up. Notice there's quite a bit of vignetting in there, too. That's something else we could look at. So let's open the shadows up. So we're showing a lot of detail in here. I probably want to pull up the contrast now. The whites and blacks, notice in the histogram there's a big space there, meaning there's no white point. And here there's no black. Well, there's a white point, but there's just not a lot of pixels in the white. So we can go here, we can pull it all the way over to brighten it. And notice that that brightens up some of these areas. And we can do the same thing with the blacks. We can push those into black. That's a good idea. And with the white, let's just pull it back. We don't need to have a lot of whites in here because it's kind of a moody image. And then we can play around with the clarity, vibrance, and saturation. But this is all training for, for other things. Let's just go a little bit on the clarity. Because I don't want to get too bogged down in, in the camera raw here. It's covered in other training that we have. And I really want to focus on using the pen tablet. So what we can do here is we've got some options. We've got this tool here. There's the adjustment brush. Now when we turn on the adjustment brush. And by the way, this is identical to working in Lightroom. So if you're using Lightroom, all these adjustments are exactly the same. So now what we can do is we can go in here and we can adjust any of these settings individually for the brush. So maybe we want to say we wanted to brighten up the front of this here. We could take the exposure up a little bit and then we could just start to paint. And notice as we do this, see how it starts to brighten up. And we're brightening up the front of it. And let's just keep painting all the way over this. And one of the things you may notice is as I'm doing this, notice it just seems to do a really, really nice job of finding these edges. Well, how is that? Well, let's have a look here. If we scroll down, we'll see we've got some options here. And one of these is Auto Mask. If we turn the Auto Mask option off, then one of the things you'll notice now is as we paint, it doesn't find those edges anymore. So let me just undo that. So that's one of the things uh, to be aware of. So it's kind of useful. So we use Auto Mask a lot when we want to detect those edges. So let's go up here and just have a look. So, you know, we've opened these up. Maybe it's a little too bright. In fact, it, it totally is too bright. So we can pull the exposure back a bit. And notice now we can control just this one area that we've painted on. Make sure that we select this guy here. As we roll over, notice it shows the mask. If we tap on it, then that means that's selected. So now we can start to play around these settings. And notice as we play with these settings, it affects just that area that we've painted. So we can start to control that. Now we can play around with the contrast, maybe punch it up a little bit. You know, play around with these highlights and maybe give it some stronger shadows. Punch up the clarity, make it very, very sharp. Because I didn't want the clarity on here because I wanted to keep these areas soft. Maybe open up the exposure a little bit more. And you can start to play around with some of the color temperatures. Now, one of the things we want to do at this point is we can choose to erase. And I just want to soften maybe these edges a little bit or maybe down here. So the way to do that is to go down here and we're going to turn the auto mask off. And we're going to have the feather here. And in the flow, we can adjust our flow a little bit. I'm going to turn the feather up. It's going to just basically make a softer edge brush. And notice here, you'll see there's 
an inner and an outer circle. The outer circle is the radius of the brush. The inner circle is where it's hard. In between the two is where we get this nice uh, gradient. So that's where the softness of the brush is. If I go and I turn that feather all the way down, you'll notice that all we get is one, which means it's a hard brush. So we're going to have a nice soft brush here. And using erase, I can just go and just gently erase this. So I'm just pressing very, very gently. And if I press harder, I'm going to get a little bit more of that. So we're just gently just kind of fading that out a little bit. And if you want to if you feel like you've gone too far, just go back to add. And then on the add, you can just go back and just gently do that. Notice we kind of got a little bit of change of the color as well. So let's go back up and notice with the color temperature. So if you want this to match, make sure that pen is attached there. And play around with the colors here. Maybe bring this over that way a little bit more. Maybe let's give it a little extra green. We're kind of pushing it a bit more. But notice we're playing with that color temperature and allowing that to do that. We could go warm if we wanted. See that? Get a very warm effect. And we could even go into pinks if you wanted that sunset. But I actually kind of like the greens because it kind of shows the moss on there. And you see we've got that kind of control there. So that's really nice. We're able to set that up. So um, notice that we've got that pen. So at any point now we can see what's there and we can continue to make those changes. Now if we want to go up in the sky and make some changes, what we can do is we can choose new. And now we've got new, we can create a new adjustment. And I've got the auto mask turned off. And I want to set my size a little bit bigger. So I'm going to set a nice big size here. Maybe a little big there. Let's drop that back a little bit. And now I'm just going to paint in the sky. There we go. We've got a nice little interesting kind of look on the horizon. Notice we've got a secondary pen. So if I roll over there now, it shows my adjustment. If I roll over here, it shows the other adjustment. So all I do is just tap. And the one that's showing black is the one that we're adjusting. So let's go back up and have a look and see what we're doing. Let's drop the exposure down because I want to show some darkness in that sky there. You know, some interesting things going on with the color. Maybe a little much. Let's go give it a little more pinkish kind of a, a hue because we really are at sunset. Oops, a little too um, cool. So we can play around with that. We can play around with the exposure, the contrast. Drop that down. And we get that kind of marbly look. We can recover some highlights in there. Let's play around with the shadows. Maybe add some shadows in there. Drop the clarity down because I want it soft. And we can add some saturation there if we want, you know, just to give it a little bit more color. So if we want to look at what we're doing before and after, we can turn the preview on and off. And notice that we can see this is what we did before and after. So you get the general idea. I mean, we can continue to go through here and brighten and darken different parts of the image. But what I'm going to do right now is I'm just going to open this back in Photoshop. Now this little tap on this little thing here, and we have the option to open as a smart object. That's how we get the raw file. And if we turn that off, it'll open it as just a regular uh, image that we can begin to paint on. But let's keep it as a smart object. Click OK. Notice that it's preparing the smart object, and now it's going to update in just one second. All right, there we go. Wonderful. Now it's updated. And we can begin to paint. But there's only one problem. If I go and I choose a brush tool, notice I get the international sign for no way. There's no way you can do that. So what we need to do is we go on here. We need to convert it now. We need to rasterize it. So we're going to right click and choose rasterize layer. Now we're going to get into the second method. And at this point now, well, we can't go back into camera raw and open it in raw once we've rasterized it. So make sure you've done what you like or the other option. Let me undo this that I like to do because I'm very, uh, I like to be safe. It's just duplicate the layer. Then take the top layer there. And now I can choose rasterize layer. And I can paint on this. And then if I don't like it, I can always go back to my smart object and open that raw again. So that gives me double flexibility. All right, well, let's have a look at doing some things in here that, you know, we might want to do. So one of the things I want to do is I want to begin to paint in here, like maybe some of the shadows area. I want to, like, paint a lighter and some areas I want to paint darker. So traditional dodging and burning, so to speak. So let's grab the brush tool. I'm just going to grab a regular soft edge brush, and we'll look at a moment in the dynamics. But why don't we set up our layers? So I'm going to hold down the Alt key. That would be Option on Mac. Alt on Windows. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to click on the new layer. And by doing this, what it does is it gives me these options. And so what I'm going to do is now I'm going to change the mode from here to overlay. Now when I do that, it gives me the option to fill with overlay neutral color. 
that's 50% gray. I'm going to choose that option. Now the reason we're doing this is to click OK. What it does now is it gives us a nice gray layer, but it doesn't show anything. It's overlay, which means that gray is hidden. But because we have a gray, that means we can actually start to paint on things, or we could dodge and burn. So if we wanted to go to our you know, traditional dodge and burning tools, we could go in here and we could start to play around with those. Notice it lightens. And why is that? Because we're showing the gray here. We're beginning to paint on it. Let me undo it. So we have that option. And I'm going to make this one light. And then I'm going to do another one. But what I'm going to do is I'm just going to duplicate that layer. And I'm going to call it dark. And so now what I can do is I can, you know, lighten it here by dodging. And I can take the burn tool. And if I paint on my dark layer, notice it will darken up those regions. So that's a great option if you want to use the dodging and burning tools inside of uh, Photoshop in a completely non-destructive way. Now, the other option that we have is we can just take a brush if we want. Uh, let's just take a regular brush here. And then we just hit the D key to reset the foreground and background colors. And then we can just choose to go on dark and begin to paint with, you know, just a black. Obviously, that's looking pretty horrible because it's a little too much. So what we're going to do is go back a little bit here, turn the opacity down, and then we could actually begin, before we do that, let's go into our options here under our um, color dynamics, underneath there, actually transfer, sorry. We're going to go opacity jitter, and we're going to set it to pen pressure. So that means now, you know, we go for a bigger brush. And if I want to darken up some of this area, like maybe some of the sky or some of the edge, I can gently paint now. And notice as I'm painting, I'm able to add that darker region. Let me go bigger because I'm going to create just a, a vignette around the whole image here. So I'm just painting around the edges. You know, typically, though, this is the kind of thing I would do at the very end. It's not usually something I would do at this point. But uh, I just want to show you what we're doing. So we can do that. And, then you know, we could darken up maybe part of the, the ocean, maybe just around here because we want to make the, our rocks pop a little bit more. So we could do that, and we're doing it this way. The, of course, the other way, if we want, we could go to our good old burn tool, and let me undo that, and I'll just let you experiment and see what works best for you. So let's just go in here, and we're just burning that a little bit, just with a, just a gentle stroke there, and make sure that we go into our brush options. Make sure that our transfer is set here. Notice now that we don't get the option for opacity anymore. Now it's called exposure. Now the exposure on pan pressure is exactly the same as opacity, except it's on the, the dodging and burning, so that's just the terminology that's used there. So, you know, we could go in here, we could darken some of this down if we want, bring out some of that detail there. I mean, and you can see how it's bringing out some of the detail in the clouds. Now, you might be thinking, wow, you know, this is kind of cool, but he's being very, very heavy-handed with this, and, and I am. Well, the good thing about that is we can adjust the opacity, so we can take it all the way down and put in just as much as we want, so we get a lot more control. So now let's flip over here. Let's do the light. And we're going to use the dodge, painting onto the light. We can go in here and we can brighten up some of these areas and some of these rocks. You know, I want to open up a little bit more detail and see how that's, that's kind of working like that. Alternatively, we could go grab a brush, grab our same brush here, and begin to paint with white. You know, let's make our brush size a little smaller here. And, uh, and we're essentially doing, you know, more or less the same thing. Once again, experiment with these two methods and see what works because there's some places where the white works really really nicely like in here when I want to create this nice little ghosty effect the white works extremely well there's other times when I might say rather than using that let's go down here and let's use our dodge tool make sure the pressure sensitivity is set for opacity or in this case exposure and I'm going to grab a bigger bigger brush and uh, you know we can start to do whoops I went a little big there and you can see we can start to do some different kind of effects here to bring out different parts of our photograph. And of course, you know, we now have the option to be able to drop that down and just tweak it in just a little bit. So we can see, you know, a little bit of dodging and burning we've done here inside of Photoshop, you know, after and before. After, you can see we've been able to add a little bit more drama. Now, obviously, you know, this is not a wonderful work of art. I'm really just trying to show you how these tools work right now but you see how we've been able to brighten up this foreground bring attention to this part here then darken this off maybe you know at some point I was going to take something in and composite something in here maybe 
a woman, uh, you know, or a model that's nicely lit and make it look like, you know, this area was lit here, maybe with a flash, you know, some some flashes and stuff like that, um, which would illuminate this foreground area and keep the back background kind of dark, and it would make a very nice composition. So, you know, dodging and burning is really there for two reasons. One is to bring back detail in the portions of the image that you want. And the second thing you can do with dodging and burning is compositionally, which is what we've done here, is to just really change the overall composition and guide the viewer's eye into the portion of the photograph that you want to bring emphasis to. And what it does is it can take a very cluttered or busy photograph and simplify it and make it a lot more powerful, punchy, and dynamic.